Hey there Wargamers and welcome back to another Wargames Delivered video. In this video, we're going to be basing a movement tray. Let's get started. So one of the big components of the A Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game is uh, the movement trays. And these hold uh, your models uh, and they act as uh, the units. So um, they're going to be a big part of the game uh, in terms of movement and combat. So we, uh, as you can see, have some mo models based here. Um, and in this video, we're just going to kind of go over how to take that basing theme that we did on our models and move that to our bases. So here we have uh, Grey Wind's base, which is a little bit smaller than the rest of them. We're going to start out by taking our texture paint here and uh, just doing a nice, not too heavy layer uh, on, on the top here. And uh, be very careful around the divots here, like the, um, uh, like the side sides there that have the little crosses in them and then the arrow up front here um, and also the big circle where the model is going to sit we don't want to cover that with the texture paint um, so we'll just cover these little areas here and we will switch over here in a moment so here I'm not trying to add too much texture paint I'm kind of just placing uh, the large blob that I have down on my paintbrush in one spot and then just moving that around uh, with the paintbrush uh, just keep that going until you have all these corners done on the, the base, and then um, this usually takes about about 45 minutes to an hour to dry, uh, depending. Um, if you would like, you can also take a heater and put it, you know, kind of in front of a heater. That's normally what I do when I'm painting, is I have like a, a small heater just about four feet behind me. Um, I also live with, in northwest Ohio, so it's always cold. Uh, so that's another reason I do that, but um, it, it helps your paint dry faster and uh, kind of combats some of that uh, um, impatience that we have when we're, when we're working. Moving on to our next step, we're going to switch over to our dark brown and we're going to cover this over all of the areas that have the texture paint that we just laid down. Uh, this is the same color that we used on Grey Wind's base underneath the snow and the alien foliage, so we're just going to keep going with this. Uh, all the way across the areas that we covered with the texture paint. Now, if you want to go one thick coat on this because it's a base, um, you're more than welcome to do that. I tend to just still go two thin coats because it's just a uh, habit for me at this point. And with this step, just try to avoid the uh, kind of more orangish brown that we put down earlier with the airbrush. We're going to uh, just pretty much leave that color as it is. Uh, so we are going to go back over with that and clean up a little bit later. Um, so you don't have to be super careful, but just keep that in mind while you're doing this spot. Next up, we're going to switch over to our wash, and for this we're going to use uh, Dark Tone. And we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with the uh, brown step that we did earlier before. And we're just going to cover these side panels here on the uh, movement tray. And I'm going pretty thick here with the wash. Uh, I'm using the same kind of concept that I used before with the texture paint where you just kind of lay it down heavy in one area and then move it over with your brush as much as you can. And then once you notice that you're kind of losing a little bit of uh, depth there to your shadows, just go ahead and grab a little bit more on your brush and keep going. And honestly, this step is probably the one that we're going to have to clean up the most later on. Uh, as you can see, I got some right in the middle there, uh, and that'll leave a nice stain for us to clean up later. But as with all of your uh, wash steps, just give this about 45 minutes to an hour to dry before you go to clean anything up. Before we do any more uh, cleaning up on the movement tray here, we're going to switch over to a light dry brush of the same uh, light orange brown that we have uh, laid down already and we're going to highlight the entirety of the movement tray with this um, and then we'll come back in later with a more controlled brush and clean up any of those areas where we need to uh, cover up. And you could use a lighter color for this to bring out a you know lighter highlight. Um, I'm just kind of trying to do a quick uh, effective dry brush here and kind of marry the two colors together. Um, Considering I'm going to have a lot of movement trays to do this on, I figured I'd go for a quicker kind of kind of paint scheme on this. Next up, we're going to take a more controlled brush and we're going to go over all of these uh, divots on the movement tray here. And of course, the arrow in front and the big circle here and the sides as well. Um, so we want this color uh, to be brought back up to where it was before we um, 
you know, went ahead and did the other sides of the bases. Uh, this can take a couple of layers. Uh, make sure you use pretty thin coats with this. You don't want to build it up right away and make the, the, the paint dry all chunky on it. Um, so just take your time, build it up, build up the layers. Um, and I actually switched to a thicker brush for the, for the actual sides of, of the movement tray. Now we're going to finish our painting steps on the model with the anti-shine matte varnish and I would actually thin this down a little bit more than I did. Uh, I actually put this on a little bit thick and had some reflective kind of white areas dry uh, where I didn't really want them. So I had to clean back up with the uh, orangish brown that we had. Um, but basically what you're trying to do here is just cover all the entirety of the movement tray. Uh, all of the sides and everything, and this will just give it a nice um, sheen and kind of lock the colors in. Next up, we're going to switch over to uh, some Battlefield glue and some Battlefield snow. And the best way that I've found to apply this is to just take a dab of the glue on like a sculpting tool or an old brush, like the end of an old brush, uh, and just kind of dab it onto the, the tray here um, and spread it out as much as you can. Um, if you do just leave like a big clump of glue, uh, the snow will tend to kind of look a little bit muddy and, and not like snow. So uh, this is the best way that I've found to uh, make it look the way you want it to. And here I'm using a uh, old paint cap to, to put the, the snow on. If you have like a small spoon or anything like that, that's just as good a tool to use for this. Um, and I like to kind of let it sit there for a minute, wipe off any excess, and then I'm using a uh, guitar pick here to just kind of break up the texture a little bit. And this also helps uh, deal with the uh, chunky kind of snow texture you'll have from using the, the basing glue. So as you can see, uh, it has that kind of loose snow texture. Um, another way that I like to, to fix this uh, clumpy kind of snow effect that you get with the basing glue sometimes is just kind of dab it on top once you've done the other steps and this will uh, kind of give you some fresh uh, granulated kind of snow on top. And just do this sporadically over the model and once you've got that step finished uh, the last step on my Stark Army theme for their bases is going to be adding these uh, alien flowers here. Uh, so what we're going to do is just kind of fold them with your fingers here. I found this is the easiest way to do it. I've used um, tweezers and stuff before, but those seem to just kind of tear the paper or rip the, the color off the paper. So this is the best way I've found to do it. Just be really gentle with your fingers here. And then you can kind of, once you've got them bent, you can bend them backwards as well. And that gives them that nice kind of fan out uh, effect. Um, it's a little tedious. You got to do it on all the leaves, but it does does leave a really nice quick effect on your bases um, and we're going to do just a handful of these on the movement tray as well just to complement um, uh, Grey Wind's base there. What I like to do is put Grey Wind on the base, on the movement tray rather, and uh, just kind of see where the ones that I put on his base are and put the, the other ones on the movement tray just kind of complementing his base. And for these, you're going to want some uh, actual super glue or some super glue gel to put these on the base. Uh, I went with just normal super glue from the dollar store. Um, you can just take them here, dab it right on the bottom where you want to put it. And we will go ahead and just dot it on the base there. They're a little bit hard to, to glue and they're very flimsy. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll just go ahead and dot that right where we want it kind of. And then the best way to get them into the exact spot you want them is to take the end of a brush and just move them around a tad. And you can also play with the leaves from here with the end of a brush and uh, just kind of just kind of move it around and get it exactly where you want it. All right, and we'll close out with some final shots here. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Uh, and always be sure to check the top link in the description for the giveaway below. And happy wargaming.